The level of saturation for each of your colors in your paintings can have a really big impact on your color harmony. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about how I approach saturation, some of the problems I've had with certain paintings because I didn't control the saturation correctly. And this painting in particular, I found to be a perfect one to have as the backdrop for this conversation because as you'll see, especially towards the end when I start adding some very saturated blues, there is some fight that I'm having to deal with as far as getting the color harmony to feel correct. And what I decided to try was decreasing that saturation just a little bit, doing some subtle little color shifts, and that seemed to make the difference for me at least to get the balance, to get that color harmony that I was after. But before we get to that part of the painting process, of course, we have to start with just getting those base colors on the panel. I'm just working on the usual very subtle, very desaturated colors just to use as my drawing colors. And then I start building more color on it as we go. Of course, this is just my method. There are so many different approaches to saturation when it comes to paintings that you really just have to search it out, look for the style that you like. I personally like to build up saturation, so I start with those subtle colors and then decide from there what colors will work as a building block on top of those initial passes. And when I think about small saturation adjustments in general, there's quite a few things to really think about when you are making these little changes as you go. The first thing I think that I've already touched on a little bit is it really enhances the harmony. Your color harmony is gonna be greatly affected just by small little changes in the saturation of a color. One really good example for this is when you're painting something and you have two really strong saturated colors right next to each other that are competing on the surface of your artwork. You may find that just simply desaturating one of those colors, not really shifting the hue, but just changing the saturation and dialing it back will have a dramatic impact in the color harmony. Something else to consider when having multiple colors that are very intense is to try to pick one that is the star of the show. Try not to have too many colors that are really fighting for attention. And if you do this, it will really help you to put emphasis on certain parts of your painting by increasing those saturation values in the area you want people to focus in on and slightly desaturating the other areas. It will help you draw a viewer's eye into the right places. Something I really look at, especially in these earlier portions of my painting is the warm and cool tones. Just by adjusting your warm tones or your cool tones just a little bit can really affect the overall temperature balance of the painting. This one, for example, you can see that it's just a little bit on the warm side in the highlights and then it gets a little bit cooler in the shadows. So even the slightest change in my saturation levels of either of those shadow areas or in the highlights could really dramatically change the overall temperature. If I was to desaturate the warm colors on the highlights, then this painting would feel like it's in a totally di different atmosphere. It's got completely different lighting effects happening. And you can actually see this quite a bit in life when you're in a person's home, they may have warmer lights or cooler lights. And just by changing the temperature ever so slightly, that room or that painting can have a very different feel to it. One of the best examples I can think of, especially when it comes to controlling your saturation, what that can do to your paintings, is it creates depth. This is very noticeable in landscape paintings where the background is very desaturated and as things get closer to the foreground, that saturation level gradually gets more and more intense. This can be used in a lot of other painting styles for even portraits, for still lifes. If you wanna create a sense of depth, dial back the saturation of those colors in the background and start to push them a little bit more in the foreground. This doesn't have to be a very big change. Make it gradual and see where that goes with your next painting. And you can keep increasing it and decreasing it to see what works for you and what works for your style. Another area that saturation control can really help with your paintings is when you have two very intense colors and you're trying to figure out a way to get those two strong colors to work together, 
it's a really good idea to at least try putting a very desaturated color between those two colors. Have it be a gradual transition from one strong color into a desaturated area of subtle grays or browns or something like that, and then transition back to that other color that you want to also emphasize. If you put two strong colors right up against each other with no transition at all, that's when the color harmony may not work. At this point with my painting, you can see that I'm starting to have some fun with that play of desaturated and very saturated colors. And I'm not completely happy with how they are harmonizing at the moment. It's not that bad, but I found that the transitions between the white background and the blues towards the top were just a little bit too harsh. So I start to do some subtle, gradual increases in saturation from that upper edge of the head into those blues and I keep on adding some more texture and subtle transitional elements to experiment and see what ends up working. Having done so many paintings in this style, I find that I'm always looking for new ways to achieve these transitions and I've gone from very strong blues to warms many times, but this one I wanted to do something a bit more subtle. I wanted to see how subtle those saturated blues could be, but still have a strong transition from those brown colors towards the bottom. This ended up taking actually a good three extra layers than I normally would spend on a painting of this size, but it really ended up becoming a study of seeing how desaturated those blues could be, but still have a very strong dynamic between the saturated and unsaturated colors. And if you look at that little bit of paint towards the bottom left, that really strong brush stroke of blue, you'll see how far down I've desaturated the colors from where it was on that first layer of blue I did earlier in this video. Even though that upper area is still very strong blue, it's a good 20, 30% less saturated than where I started. And I think it worked out okay. I think there are some definite improvements I can make with this painting, but I'm gonna leave it as it is and just use this as a learning experience for the next paintings to come after it. So if you're looking to improve your saturation skills, your color control when you're painting, I do have a lot of videos on my Patreon account, a lot of tutorials for you to look at that will help guide you as far as color mixing, controlling these sort of colors, and figuring out what your style should be. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comments section, I'd be happy to answer them. There's a lot of aspects to saturation that can get a little overwhelming at times, but Again, thank you so much for watching another one of my painting videos. I really do appreciate it. I will talk to you again very soon.